with 3,000 damage per minute. Insane troll turret armor 325 meters view range which is the highest in the game great camouflage and insane mobility it is unsurprising that the vicar's light is one of the most versatile tanks in tier 10 and furthermore it often crosses the line between what defines a light tank and what defines a medium tank you can find yourself fulfilling both roles depending on the situation and today, that is what I will be trying to demonstrate to you. So hello everyone, His Royal Fan is here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I will be playing three consecutive live games in the Vicar's Light to demonstrate my own personal playstyle and how I decide whether to play this tank more like a medium or a light and how I react to different situations. Of course, this is live gameplay, so I never know what situation we'll be in, but that is the beauty of this style format of video. So here's the first game. We are on Dynasty's Pearl. Not necessarily the best light tank map, but thankfully we are in a Vicar's Light. That means we do have some turret armor, some haul down capabilities. And this game, I think what I'm going to do here, of course, is just take a very generic route. Go park, try and spot the enemy team, farm up some damage early, and then flex around depending on what the enemy team do. Now their medium tanks are a TVP, Insanely deadly if that one was to run into me and clip me for 1200. Uh, they also have a T92, very annoying derpy light, a Centurion 7 Mark 1, good at haul down. They also have a Chief to Mark 6. And the Chief to Mark 6 would be pretty crazy not to go park, so I would not be surprised at all if he goes park. But here's that beautiful view range. 325, I was able to spot that Centurion 7 Mark 1 from so far away. And because of that, now we are able to get an early shot off, and that's great for me. Now, if this Chief to Mark 6 is to go haul down and try dealing with me, that is not good because he has a strong turret and everything that would just make him a very deadly opponent. So I'm going to back up from the Chief to Mark 6, and as you will have noticed, half or so of my team has in fact gone towards the town. And um, that's not good for me. I'm actually in a bit of a pickle here. Now, if this E4 were to continue pushing up, I'm gonna wait till he fires. He has just now shot, so that means we can pop a shot towards his tracks here and just run away from this t 124 I'm going to go town and yes I could continue holding park but looking at the numbers advantage the enemy team have in park it's not great and plus poking a hold on chief to mark six it's just not going to go well so what I'm going to do here instead is see if I can help my team at all push up on towards this VK 72 now the VK has just fired his gun that is good let's pop a shot down towards his lower plate here and we're just going to kind of push around this VK and try and get him to turn around to my teammates here. So he's not going to, he's going to want to back around the corner and not poke the Chieftain. There we go. And now we have the VK here in a bit of a crossfire. And that's where you just use that mobility to your advantage. Now if the Chieftain were to push up, hopefully he'll take some shells here. I do see a TVP around the corner, but there we go. Since the VK is in a crossfire and obviously he wants to tunnel me and not the tier to heavy tank in front of him, uh, he's just going to blow up just very quickly so i'm gonna wait he's still saving a shot for me he is just now fired and we're going to try and pick up a kill unfortunately that kill shot went a bit low i don't want to over poke this corner there we go just because of all those tanks around there and i'm gonna push back i don't want to poke hold on tanks again and that vk 72 just wasted all of his time to shoot this the chief to mark six when he could have gone at least two reloads off there if he had picked up one of their uh, if he had shot the chieftain initially so really it's not worth holding your shot if someone's giving you a shot then usually i would say just try and take it let's try and put a shot to the chieftain of course the chieftain's going to pen that he is a very good heavy tank with an amazingly accurate gun but i'm still going to do my best to see if i can get some shots into him and yes i'm holding hold down for now i don't know exactly where i would want to push here let's see is this scent giving me a shot not quite nor is the e4 and i'm mostly worried about what that t92 could be up because he could be flanking through my right hand side here trying to see if he can get shots into my side we're just gonna hold park for now and i think my team is actually making quite a nice play down the mid here so let's see if i can help out our bat chat and just pop up through the mid and start farming out these vehicles such as this centurion 7 mark ones pop a shot towards him and that is the vicar's gun being troll and that is probably my biggest gripe overall with this vehicle is the fact that ah that was a bad hash shell is the fact that you really don't have the best accuracy on the move. You have to aim in pretty much every single shell here. Chieftain, you're making a big mistake. There we go. Angling a shot off our upper plate there, taking his tracks off, and this game was over very quickly, and I was very passive, but if I had pushed in by myself, I without a doubt would have been absolutely ripped apart by the enemy team, and I think pushing out of the park there was the right play. It was a bit slow, but the enemy team just being so split up, and so kind of determined to shoot me there worked to my advantage, and this was a like light tank battle 100 percent. i did not play a medium tank i did not go haul down and try farming i floated around as much as possible just trying to figure out where i can get opportune shots and there's like that and that's 3800 or so damage so not too shabby let's jump into another game and that's what you want to do with your vickers light so take it hold on when you can 
and take those fights if it suits you. But facing a hard on Chieftain Mark VI, supported by a Hori with four other teammates sitting behind them, was just a bad idea. Instead, getting out of that scenario allowed me to pressure the isolated target playing, fulfilling that light tank role of just being a nuisance and flanking around, and the VK-72 who sat there the entire time just staring at a corner only got one shot of damage off before he died there, and that is... That is a win-win for the team, and that allowed my team to easily just sweep that side instead of me holding Park. And I would have 100% died if I had held Park. T92, Ho Ri, TVP, all of those guys would have just yoloed me. So when you're playing the Vickers Light, you have to be very uh, versatile, like open open-minded about how you position yourself. You're not just a medium, you're not just a light. Try and think a little bit outside of the box when it comes to playing this vehicle. Now, we're on Castilla for the second game, and I'm going to go for an early tank destroyer spotting position. Now, mind you, the enemy team do not have any good tank destroyers unless you count the Badger, but I'm still going to try and spot up early. There's the Chief to Mark VI, and now we know at least where one of their tanks are, and I think I could probably get a shot into this FV for free. I am snapshotting here because I don't want to sit in the open and allow myself to get nuked by the enemy team, and this is a very interesting position. If you hold here, this building protects you from the hill. It allows you to spot up their tank destroyers quite early, and you are pretty safe from YOLOs. Now, the Patton has pulled back, which is good. I don't think I am still spotted, but he knows I'm in the vicinity. I want to see if someone could spot up the FV, and if he can, we'll pick up a kill on him. But you know what? We have a 1 to 1, a 4 to 2, and a Centurion 7 Mark 1 over here. It's unlikely that the enemy team are just going to hold here for very long. Pop shot towards this Chieftain. Great. I'm going to pull forward away from this pat, and if this pat tries to pressure me, he's going to fall right into a Chieftain Mark 6. And there we go. That's why I just kind of held up top there, because I figured, you know what? The Chieftain's going to be up in a moment. And I will trade shots with this pat in here, but I'm fine with that, because we're going to take his tracks off. Chieftain will get probably another shell into this pat, in, and. We should be able to pick up the kill, and I don't want to trade another shot, but at the same time, it's nice to pick up a kill while he's tracked there, so we've done a pretty good job clearing the top so far. Our team did excellent work pressuring this spawn. There could be someone there. Okay, there's a chief to swap a Hesh shell into his rear 525. Utilize that Hesh. It is insanely beautiful. Anyways. So the TVP is now going to run through encounter cap. He has nothing left to do really. So we're pop a shell towards him. He is actually sitting in the encounter cap trying to shoot at me, which I don't know why he isn't just dropping into safety right now. Instead, we can load up a head shell, picking up a shot. Oh, I hit a car. How unlucky. Okay. Well, we are still going to do our best to try and pick up a kill on this TVP. Is he still holding his clip? Okay. He can't have. Yeah, he's reloading. I'm really shocked that that TVP decided to just sit there and tunnel me instead of pushing through where he'd be much safer but oh well anyways we are going to continue farming up this game now i made some unwise trades on the tvp if i'd been able to pick him up very quickly this would have been easy and you can see there's an m6yo coming my way so what i'm going to do is we're just going to run away from the m6yo he has an insane double shot gun and we're just going to pull left here and get away from him and hopefully that will leave me free to farm out some of their tanks in just a moment if the m6 stays up there that's not good for him now i think he's actually running the three shot dpm gun swap shell him because he's not looking i am in a bit of a crossfire here but Let's see, if I can bait a shot out of this Badger, I can probably just pull through through the front here. Okay, Badger's not even looking. Let's pop a shell into him. Very nice. And if the Badger is still distracted, we might even be able to pop another shell into his drive wheel here, picking, taking that off. Very good. And we might get yelled by the Yo here, and if that does happen, that's a little unfortunate, but hopefully, let's run away from the Badger. And I'm just going to kind of hold this position for now, because I'm worried about that Yo yoloing me. I should be able to perma spot him if he were to do so, and he's still pretty far away. All right, let's load up a head shell for the Badger. Not quite able to hit that one. I'm not trying to take shells right here, because if I do I am a one shot for that M6 yo and you know we did a pretty good job this game I say I was just kind of chilling for the most part top of kill shot towards the chieftain fortunately a little bit of a low roll but I would have required a high roll to kill him anyways 3700 damage has already been dealt here and that's what I mean the vickers can farm up damage very easily but at the same time, I'm always very kind of floating around when I play this tank. I never want to commit to a single flank. Let's pop a kill shot towards this badger here. And hopefully the chieftain doesn't hit me, and he does not. And that should leave me to load up the Hesh here and start farming out this M6 Yo for free. 477 into his side. And yeah, this is this is this is quintessential, in my opinion, Vickers Light gameplay. Just taking it easy. I don't know why this M6 Yo is turning his side to a Chieftain Mark 6 to shoot at the Vickers. I, I, people have a habit of really wanting to tunnel the Vickers Light for some reason. Let's pop a heat shell towards this Chieftain's turret. Pick up a nice kill there. Not bad. Solid game. 4,000 plus damage. That's roughly what I want to average in the tank. And uh, what I did there is just very... For the most part, generic stuff. I pushed up onto the Castilla Hill. I f helped f farm out, so let's pick up a kill on their medium tank. The moment I realized we had a pretty significant numbers advantage there. GG to the Chieftain, by the way. Uh, we just pushed through. 
And of course, after that, I made a bit of a mistake when I pushed him towards the encounter cap. And why was that? Because I took two, three unnecessary shots from the TVP, and I only put one in return. If I'd managed to pick up the kill while only taking one shot, good trade. But the fact that I lost so much HP there really restricted how flexible I could be at the end of that battle. And after that, I just kind of played Ring Around the Rosies at the building, farming up damage, just waiting patiently for the enemy team to poke out, and then taking shots when they're not paying attention. That's essential. You want to poke on your own terms. Do not sit there and just poke when a tank is sitting and aiming at you. For the most part, that's not a great idea unless it has poor penetration, poor alpha damage, or really bad accuracy, in which case you can gamble that risk. Generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend that though. Okay, final game is on Alpenstadt. This is a decent map for the Vickers Light. Now, the enemy team is pretty heavy, but they also have three medium and light vehicles, so I'm going to pull up towards this middle bush and just see if I can spot who is crossing right off the bat. If we can figure out who's crossing where, we might be able to figure out how to pressure in this side. So, there's the TVP, getting a quick shot onto him. He obviously wanted the Kappa A, and right now, I'm just going to pull back a little bit. I don't want to get nuked by a 183, but I also want to be in a position where if I need to, I can definitely spot the 183. So, TI2 has just fired his gun. That's good to know. And it's seems like the enemy team is somewhat holding this side. Now we have spotted up the mouse and I'm going to drop through the river here and just see if I can try and get safe. Now I'm going to float around here. I don't know if I want to push town or medium side yet. I haven't quite figured out where the enemy team is. There is a T-57 heavy. Let's put a shot right into his side there. And we're just going to play patient game. The patient game of just sitting around and taking shots when we see the opportunity. Putting another shell into the T-57. He has just clipped out his magazine. The mouse has, of course, just fired. Spot a shot towards his lower plate. Poor shooting by me there. And, of course, there's a 183 and encounter cap. Okay, that opens up a lot more possibilities, actually. Let's pop a shot towards the mouse. Ah, I can't get my shooting on point. Okay, this opens up a lot of possibilities for me. Because the mouse is in B. Right? And that means if I were to just do a little bit of a flanky flanky here, I'll be able to put this mouse in a bit of a crossfire and then pull down into safety. He'd have to pull up pretty far to shoot me. I'm safe from the TI2 who is getting heavily pressured right now. Let's load up a heat shell here and we're going to start pressuring this left hand side. The enemy team are isolated and once again, I took a patient I took a patient approach at the very start of this game. I didn't YOLO into the enemy team. I waited to figure out where's that 183 at? Where are those other heavy tanks out. And then once we got that information, it's fairly easy to just push in. Let's put a headshot onto the side of this TVP here. We're going to pull across to get safe from the 4202. And then let's try and pick up a kill on this TVP unless my teammates can do so before me. Very nice. And we're just cleaning up the medium side. Now 4202. Very uh, formidable tank if he were to utilize his hash against me, but also he's been spawn sniping all game, and we're going to make a judgment that he probably isn't the best player. So let's push onto him on the move. I'm going to push all the way across, so I'm safe from the encounter cap, and this should leave me free to just kind of farm out the 4-2-2. And right now, I'm just going to be a little bit aggressive for damage. The enemy team don't have very many tanks left on hit points at all. So let's put it, try and hope we can max roll this 4 2 here. Or just be a bot and mess up our shot unnecessarily when we could have just fully aimed that in and we would have been fine. Oh well. Bot gameplay by me. Let's put a shot into this M5 yoke here. I'm just going to pull across. The Leo can pick up a kill on him. I want to see if there's a way I can find out this 183, who is obviously in the B cap. So let's pop a shot towards him. I'm able to snap that one off, but this 183 is going to go down very, very quickly. So 50B is probably just going to eat a shell here from the 183. And that should leave me free to put one shell into the 183 here. And uh, there we go. 183 manages to pick up that kill there. We're going to give a little ram ram. We're going to put a little hess shell into the back of his tank and pick up the kill. Solid game. 7-4, we played that very well. I am happy with how we played that. That was a good mixture of light tank at the start, medium tank at the end. Once again, a solid 4,000 damage dealt. What I did that game is I spotted early. I got an early shot on the TVP. We knew where their meds were right off the bat, but we didn't know where the rest of their team was. So once the mouse got spotted in town, I figured the mouse might be isolated, so I kind of pushed back in towards the mid there just to see if I get some shots. Got some good shots on the 57. And then once that 183 was spotted and the M5 yo, Bingo, that's pretty much their entire team in the open, and that's when the Vickers is most deadly. Once you figure out where their team is, you can make a pressure on a side and play it like a medium tank, pushing in, using that DPM, picking up kills. And if you play the Vickers like this, you're going to perform very consistent and very well overall. I love this vehicle because of its versatility, and I think that's why it's very popular, but I also think a lot of players tend to get too much medium tank mindset or light tank mindset. In my opinion, the best way to play the Vickers is to have a dual mindset. Play it more like a light in certain situations, as I did with a lot of these games at the start. 
passive and easy, and then utilizing that mobility DPM to use more of a medium tank roll and rip tanks apart. And if you do that, it's a solid vehicle. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope it was helpful for you to uh, understand the play style of the Vickers Light, at least my play style in the Vickers Light. So please feel free to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe for more content to come. You guys are awesome, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.